Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello, hi. So today's candle of the day is Black Tree Fruit Pop. I've been burning it while I've been like getting ready today and I just love the summery scent of everything. So hi, so today's video. Um, okay, I feel like I need to take some deep breaths. I feel like we all need to take some deep breaths before this one. So uh, James Charles is back. I posted a video pretty recently talking about YouTuber comebacks and discussing sort of how even if a person does come back and has a successful comeback, that doesn't mean that all of the sort of holding them accountable was for nothing, that we gotta start looking at cancel culture on the internet and holding people accountable as the sort of large scale thing that it is, which is setting precedence going forward. And in that video, I discussed James Charles's sort of like semi comeback, like how he was posting on Instagram and posted some Twitter videos and how he was doing the sort of same thing that Shane Dawson is doing, where they're just like, testing the waters to see when it's going to be a good time to come back. Um, I did think that James Charles was not going to be coming back for a lot longer. However, on Friday, he posted a video titled An Open Conversation, and I think it's really worth it to go through that video a little bit and point out some of the just like, Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Here, I'm gonna say it right up front, just so you're not like waiting the whole video. This was like easily one of the grossest and worst things I've seen in a very long time on this platform. Like it's, I, you guys know, I feel like I say this all the time. I'm like, oh, I don't get heated that much. I actually have been getting heated a lot more lately. And it's because the flagrant and blatant disregard for victims of sex um, is getting to a disgusting level on the internet lately. And the video that James Charles just posted basically just proves that. Proves that you can quite literally admit to crimes and just do a get ready with me as if nothing fucking happened because the impact it will have on your life is that small. So on Friday, which I, I'm sorry in advance, I'm going to be nitpicky in this video because after reading the thousands of positive comments from presumably young James Charles fans and seeing people already start to defend him and say, well, he deserves a second chance. Just because he spoke in a lower pitch tone for a video, it pisses me off. I'm gonna be nitpicky because there's a lot to be nitpicky with about this video because it was frankly, like the video was I think it's super convenient that James dropped this video, number one on a Friday, which is always when they say you should like put out news stuff. Like if you've ever even heard the word public relations, you know that. And second of all, it wasn't just a Friday, it was the Friday of the 4th of July. So he posted this video on a Friday before a very popular holiday weekend where lots of people would be out and about and not really watching this video or watching news about him. This, this is like, first and foremost, the most blatant, <laughs> obvious thing that he did to try to make sure that this got shoved under the rug just a little bit. I also think it's just freakily convenient that he not only chose the Friday before the 4th of July, but he also chose a time when there was about 55 other major scandals and drama going on. So he just kind of snuck in in between all of that. Like I genuinely think the coverage of all of this James Charles stuff is lessened simply because everything is happening with Gabby Hanna right now. And I'm pretty sure that James's team and James himself are too calculating not to take advantage of this sort of perfect storm of a situation that would allow not as much attention or criticism to be brought to this video. Another important point about this video is that it's a get ready with me style video. So he's doing his makeup while talking about sexual conduct. So like that's a first, which I find to just be very, again, manipulative. Similarly to the timing in which he posted this video, I find the fact that it's a get ready with me to be very manipulative because how does everybody know and see James Charles? It's like doing his makeup. He's trying to be in an environment that you know him in and that it's like, this is just your good old pal James. Like this is the guy you subscribe to. This is the guy who just does his makeup and chit chats with you guys about his life. And like, that's me. And I just find it again to be so not only inappropriate for the situation. I know he claims that like he understands that it's inappropriate, then don't do it. If you understood that it was an inappropriate time to be doing that and an inappropriate way to address a situation, number one, don't do it. But number two, it wasn't just that it was inappropriate 
appropriate, it was also just incredibly manipulative. And that kind of theory of manipulation is even further proved by how he opened the video. Because he opens and starts talking in the video as if it's just like you catching up with a friend. He's like, yeah guys, hope Pride Month was good, things are starting to open up again, like really trying to play off of this parasocial relationship that he knows he has built with his mostly young fan base. And I think that's a really key point to note here. While I'm sure people of all different ages are going to feel very differently about this, I think James Charles is well aware of the fact that he has lost a large portion of his adult fan base. Because a very large portion of his adult fan base are the people who can recognize how up this whole situation is, how bad this whole situation is, and how wrong this whole situation is. What he is banking on and hoping for are the young people that follow him, which is a large portion of his audience, backing him up and supporting him because they probably do not understand the gravity of this situation. And honestly, the people who have the strongest parasocial relationships on YouTube are younger people. Those are the people who are way more susceptible to having a parasocial relationship with a YouTuber. That's why people who have a younger demographic make way more money than people that don't on YouTube, because it's way easier to feed into that parasocial relationship to buy merch, to buy makeup, which I'm sure he's going to launch soon. He needs that young demographic, and so that is who he is playing into, especially with this video. He starts off the video by saying that he took three and a half months away from YouTube and how weird that was, and also that he really wants to try and find a way to move forward from everything that happened. He touches on the last video that he posted, which was the holding himself accountable video that is now deleted for some reason, basically saying that it was a miss and like not a great video. And like it wasn't a great video, but in that video, very importantly, that's where he admitted to the fact that he had inappropriate conversations with minors and backed up the stories that especially the two first boys who came forward told. So the fact that that evidence of him admitting to that is now gone, and also the fact that in this video we're going to talk about in a minute, he literally tries to like rewrite history about that video is concerning. Not that I don't think that video is copied somewhere, and I'm sure it will be re-uploaded, and I'm sure you can like still watch it somewhere, but it's just concerning to me that he is literally trying to erase evidence of what he previously said, especially because there's a lot of theories going around that what he said in that video could be held against him in a court of law, which is why a lot of people think he did delete it. I honestly don't know his motivations behind deleting it other than I think he was trying to get rid of any evidence against him that he actually admitted to doing these things. He also talked about how he feels like in his last videos a lot of his points were overshadowed because the video seemed too scripted and while I agree that the video seemed scripted I disagree that his points were overshadowed. I think his points were just bad. He was doing a standard beauty guru apology for a crime and was admitting to that crime and then using victim blaming rhetoric to try to explain why he wasn't actually guilty despite the fact that he was. His points in that conversation and in that video are honestly irrelevant. Like they, they wasn't a need to overshadow them because the main point of the video was that you did what you were being accused of and you are not taking accountability for it. So I don't think it was the fact that it seemed scripted that overshadowed it. I think it was the fact that you admitted to a fuck crime that overshadowed it. He talked about how his very first instinct when the allegations came forward were to get on video and like expose the people that were making the allegations and like disprove them, which again, I, I think this is just, and maybe you guys can tell me if you think I'm being like way too cynical, but like, I just feel like that is like a, a slightly veiled threat. Like, am I wrong? <laughs> that that feels like a threat that he's literally saying to those kids like hey i could have exposed you but like i chose not to thanks like and he really just said that he wanted to expose that these kids were lying to him but again like that point even if that is what happened like, even if they did lie about their ages i cannot stress enough how irrelevant that is to the entire context of this situation. Because like I said before, if it was a one-off situation, sure, that would play a factor in it. The fact that this has happened multiple times and that the conversation got so far that you were sending 
photos of yourself to a minor means that that's irrelevant. It shows a blatant disregard for the age of the people you were talking to. So it does not matter that you have evidence or whatever that you they lied to. It doesn't matter because you've done this so many times that that point is now moot. What that shows to me, if you, they were just lying to you and you easily believed it, shows that you just didn't care about their ages. After that, he basically says that he doesn't feel like this is just some scandal that he can come back from immediately. He feels like he understands Understands the severity and seriousness of these allegations and that he wants to hold himself accountable for that and again like I just find that hard to believe because he quite literally when the first allegation happened tried to just post a notes app apology and move on and ignore everything and also you're literally addressing all of this while doing a get ready with me as if this is just some everyday run-of-the-mill scandal so sorry like you're, again your actions are not lining up with what you're saying and I think that's the most frustrating part about this whole situation is his actions just never line up to anything that he's actually said. On top of that, in this video, all of the language that is used, it's all about him. Everything is about him. It's, this is embarrassing to him. This was the biggest wake up call to him. It's all about James. And there's quite literally not a moment where he apologizes or talks about the effect and impact this had on the kids who he hurt. It's nothing about that. It is all 1000% about how this impacted impacted James. If you scroll through the comments too, honestly, that's what 90% of the comments are like literally mocking is that this video is all about, oh my God, this was the most embarrassing thing that happened to me. This was a horrible thing that happened to me. It's not about James. James Charles, despite what he would want you to believe based on this video, is not the victim in this situation. He is not the one who was hurt in all of this. He is not the victim in this situation. He is the perpetrator in all of this. Can you imagine if like, these kids actually pressed charges against him for sending nude images to a minor, which is what he did. Can you imagine if he just went into court and told the judge like, yeah, this was just really embarrassing for me. Like this is, this is insanity that this is his defense and excuses that he, this is embarrassing for him. It's traumatizing to the people he hurt, but James is embarrassed. So we should all feel bad for him, I guess. He claims that he spent the two years after the bi-sister scandal changing and evolving and growing and that this sucks so bad because now people won't believe that he did all of that. And it's like, yeah, it's almost as if your actions have consequences. I don't know, like shocking. And similarly, he talks about how much it sucks that this, these allegations and everything against him are going to follow him for the rest of his life. And it's like, again, I hate to beat a dead horse, but yeah, actions have consequences. You sent new images to an underage boy with underage fans and now yes for the rest of your career you have to face the consequences of that because that is what you did like I do I frankly do not care that James Charles's career might be impacted by this I care about a billion times more about the ripple effect that his success will have on victims feeling like they can come forward the whole video is just riddled with what I, I call the Tana Mojo apology which is where you basically just say a billion ways that the situation that you caused is going to negatively impact you and you place all of the blame onto everyone but yourself except at the very end you add this statement where you say something like but at the end of the day it's my fault it's on me it reeks of non-accountability because you don't mean that if you thought that all of this was on you and a direct response from your behavior like if you genuinely believed that all of the before nonsense about how it's actually not your fault is not needed but it continues to what I consider to be the worst part of this entire video because this is where James talks about the false allegations against him. He says in this that there was a story spun by, I think it was Deaf Noodles is who he was talking about. I'm pretty sure it's Deaf Noodles. During the time of a lot of kids and also adults coming forward about stories with James, Deaf Noodles basically compiled this Twitter thread of every single allegation that was brought up. And then it became this headline of like, there's 20 victims of James Charles. And James Charles said that there were no victims of James Charles, which in this video, he literally says there are no victims of James Charles. There's not 20, there are no victims, which is a lie. That's a blatant lie. Anyway, I was going to, for a moment, like in my initial rough draft of this script, I was going to talk about how sort of there is this like ethical dilemma when accusations and allegations are coming forward of like, do you cover them? Because there is this wanting to believe and uplift and support victims. But there is also this sort of fear of what James is talking about, where it could be a false story, it could be a false allegation, it could be something somebody is doing just to get attention because they think it's funny because they're trolling 
going there are some sick people on the internet that do that however i feel as if that's like exactly what james wanted was he wanted people to talk about that instead of talking about the root of the problem which is that some of those people that came forward were accurate and by not sitting down and dispelling which ones were true and which ones weren't true what he is doing is invalidating every story james claimed that he doesn't have receipts and screenshots to prove some of these stories but with that being said, I think that James knew what he was doing. He was casting doubt on every single story because he was unwilling to go through and explain which stories were or weren't true from his perspective. And honestly, even if a couple of these instances were untrue or were twisted, to then go off on a tangent and say that posting about you gets people clout and gets people to go viral and how that's a problem and an issue is some of the most blatant victim blaming rhetoric I've seen seen in a very long time and it's frankly not even relevant. This part of the video was literally just the James Charles pity party of how he can't talk to strangers on Instagram because they're going to expose his DMs because it'll make them go viral and everybody who exposes him just wants clout. Like this is all and I can't even believe what I'm talking about right now. I can't even believe that in a video going back and addressing the illegal and immoral shit that he did, he is literally sitting there while putting on nose contour, talking about the fact that there have been false allegations and how we need to notice the trend of people falsely accusing James and how dangerous that is. Like, go fuck yourself. Even if that is happening and that is a trend, number one, that doesn't take away from the fact that a lot of those allegations were true. And number two, yet again, because you are unwilling to say which ones are true and which ones aren't true, you're just casting doubt and sending harassment to every person who comes forward to you. You have now set the precedent that people who come forward about you, they're just looking for clout. You're planting that seed. Everybody who comes forward, they're just looking for clout. They're just looking for attention. They just want to go viral. It's ridiculous. It's it's absurd to me that this is what this video was. I, he spent more time in this video, like time-wise, trying to deflect and defend what he didn't do than he did actually addressing what he did do. And I think that that speaks volumes. And even when he does take ownership in this video, like there's a part where when he's talking about how people go viral talking about him, he's like, and I know that's my fault. And you, you think he's gonna say, I know that's my fault for using my fans as a dating pool. I know that's my fault for messaging all of these underage people. You think that's what he's gonna say. But then he says, no, I know that's my fault because I talked about being single on the internet because I talked about being desperate and I talked about being boy crazy and liking straight boys. Like that's my fault. When like, that's not the problem people had with you. He won't take accountability for what he actually did. He's like making up random shit that doesn't play any factor in this. And it's too deflect from the seriousness of his actions. Now I have to say, and I'm gonna try really hard to not. This part of the video made me really angry. Basically talked about and said um, that he didn't have screenshots, you know, all of that stuff. But then he also said that he knows that people just want drama and tea because people think that the drama and tea is more fun. And so he knows that people will be like disappointed he didn't prove things or disprove things because people just want drama and they just want tea. And I just have to say, and this is not even specifically about James Charles, it's like the Jeffree Star paying off victims of this is the victims of David Dobrik and Dirty Dom. This is Gabby Hanna, like exploiting Jesse Smiles trauma for views. Like this is all of that. But I just have to say that as a person who has, is a survivor of sexual assault and has been through that and has had to cover all of this as like a drama channel or a tea channel or a comment, like whatever you want to call me, as a person who's had to cover a lot of this stuff, I don't find this to be fun at all. I find this to be incredibly triggering, re-traumatizing, and frankly, especially in the James Charles situation, I find this shit to just be horrific in general. I find the fact that a person who not only was accused of these crimes, but admitted to these crimes, is coming back on a public platform with a get ready with me, basically just being like, oh, yep, made some mistakes, shouldn't have talked about how desperate I was, 
okay, that's it. Like I find that and that people are going to forgive him and he is still going to be like one of the most successful beauty gurus. That is such a sickening pill to swallow as a person who has gone through similar things to what his victims have gone through to know that like he's gonna be just fine. That's a sick pill to swallow. I don't enjoy talking about this shit. This isn't stuff that I like doing. I have to literally mentally prepare myself to discuss these situations as I'm sure a lot of people who have talked about it and covered it have because it's not easy and it's not something anybody wants to talk about. Nobody wants James Charles to be a, a a person who abuses his power in this way. What I want is for people in power to stop fucking abusing it. Like he's right, this isn't tea, this isn't a scandal, this isn't drama, this is you committing a crime. And for some reason, instead of this being dealt with in court and the police going to your house, instead of that, all that we can do is have people like me and other drama and commentary channels cover it to try to get some semblance of fucking justice. Do you know how sickening that is? Like, do you know how mind bending that is? That the only way I think that you'll ever get justice is by people like me making videos about you? Do you know how fucked that is? That injustice is not the fault of James Charles, but the fact that he profits off of that injustice and will continue to profit off of that injustice is sickening. I had more notes but I literally can't even continue with this because the rest of the video was just more of the same. He talks about how he is going to be protecting himself from things versus actually protecting other people from his actions because all he cares about is himself. He talks about how he can't date a celebrity because like it's too, there's not enough celebrities for him to date. And he talks about his birthday and his vacation for eight minutes. And then he ends the video comparing himself to a butterfly. I wish I was kidding. <laughs> he literally compared himself to a butterfly. He was doing a butterfly look and said, I feel like this look is representative of me because I feel like I'm a butterfly. I'm being reborn right now. Committed a crime against children, but is being reborn now as a butterfly. That's all I have to say about that um, and how serious he takes this. I have a little bit of hope because this video did only get like 3.5 million views, which I know seems like a lot. However, compared to a lot of his other videos talking about this. So that does tell me at least that people are seeing through it. It tells me that, you know, he's not getting this insane amount of support on this comeback. Um, and I guess it's really just about going forward. I mean, he's made it clear he's gonna keep posting and just keep living his life um, on the internet, making millions of dollars. And that's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. So I feel like I get how discouraging these situations can feel because having talked about them, especially this past year with so much happening, it, it feels exhausting. And honestly, it feels annoying for me to just be like, well guys, we all have to just vote with our view and like not support him and just like, you know, try to get accountability that way. Like it does, it's not working and it's exhausting. And I think what I'm trying to remind myself of and like remember is the fact that him losing anything, be it he, instead of 5 million views, he gets 3 million. That is justice for his victims. And I think that that's, even if it's a little win and it's a little victory, like that's something you have to hold on to and know that like that is something, that's some type of progress. I don't know, I really struggled with this comeback. I think it's just cause I'm so, mind blown at how flippantly he talked about everything. Like, I think that's really the biggest part of it that gets to me. It's just how little he gave a fuck about anyone other than himself in that video and how he really thought posting that was going to be like doing anything. It, just, it blows my mind to me. Like, it's truly astounding to me. Like, it really is. It's astounding that that video was posted and that he thought that that was like his butterfly, like being reborn moment. He didn't apologize to his victims. He didn't own up to anything that he did. Like I, I talked about his vacation, what? Anyway, I have to go. Um, I love you guys so much. I hope you like this video. Like and subscribe, you know the outro. I can't do it right now, but I will see you in the next one.